It's been a while since we published another MAT video, so let's get started with a nice little 2007 question from the MAT. This is question A, and we need to find the values of R and S where this fraction is an integer. What to do now? The first thing is to convert it into primes. By the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, every number has its factorization into primes. If you're not confident with five factorizations, let me write down the factorizations of 6, 8, 9, and 12 out for you. This is all very interesting. Now what we do is that we convert this fraction to make 2R plus S times 3 r plus s. See what I did there? It's a lot of exponents. Times 2 to the power of 2r minus 2s because the 2 here is squared. And then times 3r minus s. All over 8 power r is 2 power 3r. And 9r plus 2s times 3 to the power of 2r plus 4s. It might be useful if you can memorize the first Five factorizations or so, I memorized them up to 150-ish there. Oh, if you look at this, the log exponents tells you to add these exponents. 2 to the power of 3r minus s times 3 to the power of 2r over 2 to the power of 3r times 3 to the power of 2r plus 4s. Now we converted it into a fraction. What do we do? We cancel these out. So we have this. 3 to the power of 2r, this goes to 2 to the power of minus s. Since this is at the bottom, we have to multi to have, we have to get this negative power. Now obviously, this would be a fraction s is greater than 0. So with our own intuition, we must say that s must be less than or equal to 0. Another way to do it is by not crossing out the fractions and realizing that 3r minus s must be greater than 3r for it to be an integer actually greater than or equal to, so that means s must be less than or equal to 0. Try it with the other bunch of 3's to get 2r must be greater than or equal to 2r plus 4s. Obviously, then 4s must be less than or equal to 0, and s must be less than or equal to 0, which is what we saw here. What had these problems got to do with prior factorization? Well, if you see a crazy fraction like this and say, hey, tell me the values of r and s really an integer. If you memorize your prime factorizations properly, then you can do your prime factorization and then cancel out as many terms as you wish, and then you can find it in mo not more than a few minutes. As I can say, it's helpful to memorize prime factorizations, and, and if I do a later video on how I visualize numbers, my, I make a lot of code words for, for numbers, as you might see in some of my earlier videos that you see, like AT is octets and others. And these are actually related to their prime factorizations. If you just remember the prime factorizations of 1 to 20, as well as other special composites like 25 is 5 squared and 60 is 2 squared times 3 times 5, then you will get all my code words using a very simple multiplicating system. My cat again. My cat wants to go outside. And anyway, you want to see my cat? My cat is very interesting. My cat always... Seems that my cat loves math. And here's my cat. Her name's Coco. And I think I put her on in a, in a couple of videos. So anyway, thank you for... Joining me in solving this odd prime factorization rational question, exponential question, and see you all next time.